Hello there, generals. Today, I'm going to talk about a, a particular bad guy in Hungary. Oh, a little, little, little naughty guy. So, uh, there's, there's several articles by the U Observer, and I'm going to read through them. You know, just to get uh, to, to see what, what, what are the fellow EU people are thinking about this current situation. Now, this one is from the 20th of March, so it's two weeks ago or so. And, you know, of course, there's a picture of a little bad guy, and it says, As the first corona patient was reported, bad guy's government quickly resorted to its anti-migration ploys. Oh, no! The first patent seemed to be an Iranian student. Ah, yes, uh, a, a, a high, high-quality Aryan individual. And, uh, uh, okay, <clears throat> studying legally in Hungary. Okay, so it's legal. So migration is responsible for the spread of epidemic. Is it responsible for the spread of epidemic? I would say that not just migration, but travel and the globalization and trade, all these things together do contribute to, of course, the spread of epidemic. Of course. And migration, of course, is an element of that. Uh, let's say people are living in other countries, right? And uh, they made, let's say there's, there's people living, there's people from China who live in other countries, and there was, there's, you know, Chinese New Year, right? And they would we went to China to visit their family in China, and then they returned back to their countries. That could probably contribute quite heavily to the spread of, you know, the epidemic. So, you know, um, does it contribute? Yeah, but does I mean is it the only contributor? Probably not. But this has a very strong effect on the spread of the thing. Anyways, it was by Adi Inotai, an uh, interesting name. But anyway, okay, so it says it feels like a lazy Sunday morning in August. Streets, uh, uh, August streets are deserted in Budapest. Public transport runs with, with a handful of passengers. Well, of course, I mean, children and dogs are playing in parks. Just some homeless people hang around in groups, smoking and chatting undisturbed. Yeah, so everyone is starting to you know, society is fragmented into its own specific groups because we don't want to coof. People look suspicious at each other and practice social distancing. Yeah, they, they don't want to coof, eh? No handshakes or kisses, yeah. That's still, the, the, coof, coofing is not the only way to spread it. Surprisingly disciplined, they are cleaning up in front of the pharmacies where only as many people can enter as there are counters. Okay? It's just a flu, bro. I mean, maybe it's just a flu, bro. I mean, people are overreacting, but hey, that's what they're doing. You know? Shops are half empty. There's a frenzy of piling up food, or anything you can get. At a local food store, a woman in front of me stores up 10 kilograms of turkey breast in her trolley. I have to ask her to leave one piece for me. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, yeah, I gotta prepare. Cause, yeah, the, it doesn't matter if the, 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 you know, the, 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 the koof doesn't get everyone. You know, the panic alone can be a serious issue. It reminds me of a game that's called, um, I think it was the swine flu. I don't know what it's called again. <laughs> Pandemic, the swine flu. I think it was, that's what it's called. And one of the ways you're going to lose the game is if the panic goes to 100%. So then the panic goes to 100%, you're, you're, you are you lose. <laughs> so one way, it was either, the, the, either the, the, the coof in that game kills you or it's the panic. And this reminds you of that. Now, she gives me an offended look. Well, uh, there's a sign at the door asking customers not to buy in, in industrial quantities. But apparently nobody cares. Yeah, they can. They can. Yeah, oh, why would they care? I mean, <laughs> industrial quality. Quantity. Well, yeah, they, they're going to buy industrial quantities because they want to store up. I haven't seen empty shelves in the food stores even during the times of the socialism. Now it feels like a psychological experiment. Well, yeah. <laughs> But the thing is that at the times of the socialism, the 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 coup thought he wouldn't have got it to Hungary because there's a, there was a massive wall in the way, you know. Much more difficult to get the coup in. So isolation would have would have helped actually. D do we really need ten kilograms of flour, five kilograms of rice, and six liters of oil, hundred rolls of pa toilet papers, and a dozen cans of mustard? Well, depends. I mean, if you think that the panic or the coup is gonna get everyone, uh, probably do you need that. Paraphrasing the Darwinian expression, it is not a survival of the fittest, but the fastest, or the fattest. Well, it doesn't have to be fat, it can just be storing it up, right, and eat it, eat it over a period of time. 
I mean, these things, rice can be conserved. Oils, I mean, oil can last for a long time. Toilet paper can last, like, forever. Mustard is, like, a pretty spiced up thing, so it can also last a long, long time. You know? So, yeah, they're not going to eat it all at the same time. From today on, soldiers will take over strategic companies and patrol the streets. But everybody wonders about their real goals. Should we prepare for a curfew like in Serbia? Oh, so Serbia's doing a curfew. Hmm. Or is it just part of a communication strategy, transmitting an impression that the government keeps the situation under control? Well, you see, some population groups do like the government keeping things under control. Hungary is one of them, it seems. The Prime Minister, the bad guy, is no doubt a master of crisis communication. Yeah, so is pretty much everyone. He's a master. <laughs> I mean, most leaders we see are masters, like in the United States. They literally, the Democrats are trying to push this, this, a whole ton of, not just the Democrats, I heard also in New Zealand, they're trying to push a huge number of all kinds of new powers and new, you know, new things to try to push their, their thing. And I don't, I don't hear anyone complaining that much about that, right? But they're trying to pu push their, their weird, their, their extra clauses, you know, the secret conditions in their bills. To you know, fight the the coup. But you know, well, I guess you know. Look, if if the leftists are going to do that, right? Why wouldn't a bad guy in Hungary do it, right? The thing is, at this point, you know, oh well, you should be against it because this is violating the NAP or whatever. Well, here's the thing. I mean, the other the other side, both sides are doing it. I mean, is which one do you choose? I don't know. If you're not gonna choose that side, all right, we're not gonna choose the other side, uh, because our goals don't even meet, right? And this side, at least our goals do meet. Um, maybe the methods don't agree, you know, we don't agree with the methods, but the goal, we don't necessarily disagree with the goal, right? He has he has been terribly alarmed with the side of a migration crisis in the last five years. Well, you know, we saw the we saw the mess that happened. Let's say. You know, with Western countries. So, there's a good reason why he did, does that. Just at the beginning of March, he extended the crisis due to mass migration for the eighth time since 2015, without any substantial migratory pressure on the borders. There's no substantial migratory pressure on the border because he, because he's there, you know, putting out the message that, hey, um, you're not allowed to just walk in. That's why there's a little pressure. The second that, the second that he drops that, that's when the pressure will increase. And that's that, that's what we observe is that you know, how more resistance you put, how less pressure it will be. But now he has a real crisis hand. Yes, a real crisis. Migrant scapegoat. Ah, uh, scapegoat. Hmm. All routines die hard. As the first, you know, coup patient was reported, the government quickly fell back to its anti-migration communication scheme. The first patent happened to be patient. I guess I mean, happened to be a you know fine Aryan student studying legally in Hungary. So it became evident that migration is powerful to spread the Well, yeah, again, it's it's part of it. Right? I don't know if they're going to argue against it being part of it, but since then, it has in fact been confirmed that first case in Hungary was of a Hungarian woman who caught the virus probably in Italy. Hmm, okay, but the other the, 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 the student still got it anyway, right? <laughs> Although, the question would be, did a student go to, like, did they go to, you know, Iran? To, to let it visit family or something like where did they student get it from you know I guess that's the question um but sh okay so she got it from Hungary the Hungarian woman got it from Italy well there you have globalization and travel is spreading the, the you know the wire so what the hell is a Hungarian doing in Italy hmm well something to do with globalization I'm pretty sure nevertheless the government ordered 13 Iranian students into custody ready to be deported from the country Allegedly, some of them misbehaved in the quarantine in the hospital, chewed chairs at the medical personnel, and wanted to leave the building. Oh, okay. Interesting. The student later said the hygienic circumstances were terrible and the medical personnel did not share any information with them regarding the condition and those being in the same room with them. <laughs> oh no, one of, the, one of us might have the coof. Quick, destroy everything. The great idea, boys, great idea. But, but they said that, that they did it because the circumstances were bad. So they did do it, right? Following up on the communication offensive, the communication offensive, wow. Hungary is getting communication offensive like 24-7, okay? So, <laughs> uh, but uh, when they do it, it's not communication offensive. So in Hollow, the Hungarians, you know, states such them. 
pumping out this particular message. Oh, no, that's a communication offensive. Okay. <laughs> the uh, Green Gun appointed on the Operation Court informs the public every day of the current developments of the coronavirus, uh, the COOF, and the measures taken. Yeah, Operation Corps. The Operation Corps of the Globalists is the way we, the WHO. You know? Who? Yeah. Who the hell cares? Uh, many journalists complain that the information is incomplete and there's feeling that the government conceals some key data. Yeah, just like China, I guess. Yeah, uh, every single government is doing that. Don't you think every single government is not doing that? <laughs> yeah, everyone is. And uh, supposedly in China it ended. I'm not sure about that, but let's say we trust. Let's say we trust them. I don't know. That's really one that's a bit like unsure. But yeah, every single government is doing that. So it's like, oh, oh no, it, it feels incomplete. We're missing key data. It's like, yeah, that's everywhere. Every single where. Huh. It's not something special for Hungary, right? But I don't... S- and, um... Well, yeah, I guess... The question is, can they even get all the information? Like, you know, there's a limit to how, to how much the government can even get information. According to a recent opinion poll of Median, the majority of the public trusts the government. Okay. Although there's a lot of circulation where the number of, you know, COOF patients... You know, San Andreas was Thursday, 19 March. They put him a gun. Are accurate? Well, that's a, that's pretty much the same question for every government. And the question then is: it's a, it's a matter of are they are they um not saying the truth about it, or is it just they don't know? Is it, it's just that's how many they have confirmed, but they can't confirm everyone. Erratic measures. Officially, only one person died so far from corona, you know, from COVID related pneumonia. But the major preparations the government announced. Vacating hospital buildings and the buildings of a contained hospital for bus of patients, in any case that they're preparing for a major outbreak. Yeah, because they saw what happened in China. They saw that at first it was like a small thing, and then boom, this massive explosion, massive, massive explosion. To the United States, a few for for like a month or two, there was very few cases, and then all of a sudden, a massive explosion. Now the United States is skyrocketing cases. So they saw that they're like, oh, we can't trust. We cannot trust. Hungary first only reintroduced checks to the Schengen borders, but as of ter- Tuesday, 17 March, closed down the borders to, pass- to passenger traffic and after some uncertainty, the Fedehiki Fedehiki International Airport as well. So, they're sealing off the transport routes to make sure the Kuf can get in. Okay. No more Kuf in. We ain't letting the Kuf in. On Wednesday, a 15 kilometer queue was reported at the Ocean Hungarian border. Indicating that the suspension of free circulation of goods could be even more painful than the restrictions on free movement. Oh, here comes the globalist stuff. Oh no 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 oh no oh no the GDP the GDP the GDP yeah the GDP is going to is going to bring everyone down with it. Oh, Orban and his foreign minister Peter. Oh yeah, bad bad man and his and his <laughs> and uh what is it mini gerbils. Yeah, no, not mini. Yeah, the foreign girls. That, that's it. You know, bad man. Declared several times that borders should remain open to transporting goods, and production should not come to a halt. Well, of course, the GDP cannot go completely down. Bad guy wants his taxes. You know, closures and recession. But key factories, Audi, Mercedes, Opel, and Suzuki, closed down within a day. Aww, aww, the GDP. Finance Minister Mihaly Varga already talked about a possible economic recession of 0.3%. Oh no! GDP! But there's a huge drop from the 4.9% GDP growth. Like, oh ho ho ho! The GDP thing hurt! Oh no no no! Not the GDP! The GDP Renos! Unemployment will surge as some sectors will soon hit rock bottom. Oh yeah, like tourism, that's one. As a sign of ma- as a sign of mismanagement. Last Friday, 30 March, the Prime Minister said in an unusual radio interview that there was no reason to spend teaching in Hungarian schools and even training teachers that if that happened, they would not be paid. Oh. Oh. Oh, bad guy. Bad guy, what are you doing? Public uproar was immense and it even convinced um, bad guys feed this, uh, feed this party, which in an unseen union with all opposition parties, Pleading him to change his mind. Oh, so they do listen to the people. It's not just a evil. It's not just an evil dictatorship. They do listen to the people. The people actually put pressure. They're like, you know what? Hmm. In less than twelve hours, bad guy announced the closure of us. Oh, so he listened to his people, and he listened to his people more than ninety nine percent of the politicians in the United States do. Isn't that ironic? This guy listened to. This guy capitulated in twelve hours to the people. 
But these, but these people, there's people, but it's like all the politicians in the United States who, you know, all the politicians in the United States who are just sitting there and have been breaking the promises for decades and decades, and they're just sitting there getting funny and And this, this guy flipped in 12 hours. Just like that, flip. He listened to his people. Isn't that lovely? Oh, the evil bad guy listened to his people. Wow. Okay. See, that's why it doesn't matter the system. This oh, the, the, the system. The system doesn't really matter much. What matters is the people. If you're for people who can really put pressure and have, you know, let's say, little big, big bad guys flip, hey. But if your people are, uh, you know, slothful and don't really do much like the United States, then guess what? You can have you can have the most pristine, the greatest democracy, the best functioning democracy system in the world. It's gonna, it's just, it's gonna decay, you know. It's just gonna stagnate because the people are supposed to put pre- are supposed to use it. It's easier for the people to put pressure in that system, supposedly theoretically, but, but, they're not. They these people don't want to. So, you know, how easy do you have to make it so the people do? Well, these people, I mean, they, these people are like, what, what, you, what you mean, what you mean? Hey, that's not right. And then they put pressure, and then you. If he's like, you know what, I'm gonna listen to my people. Evidently, most schools and teachers haven't been prepared for an upper shift from the usual frontal teaching methods into the technology of the 21st century. But surprisingly, a lot of creativity emerged. Mm. Yeah, that's because of the it's public schools, probably. I think so. Public anything that's public will stagnate. I mean, that's the state will stag will make everything anything stagnate. The st- state control is very bad for any improvement, effectively. Only, only if there's some really big crisis, when you know, which only if some really big crisis like this can like break them out of the lethargy and you know, and have them like do something like break the trend effectively. You're like, oh, you know what? Let's do something else. But it's it's gonna last for, you know, as long as the crisis ends and uh, crisis lasts, and then after that, not much. At the first, after the first. Two days of chaotic preparations. From Wednesday on, most children get materials via Skype, Google Classroom, or emails and spend most of the morning studying at home under, pa- under parents' supervision, which makes teleworking somewhat less productive than expected. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Under the, wait, wait, wait. So, it, it, it's under their parents' supervision, and it, the teleworking is less productive because of that. Okay, why? Why is that? As experts already warned, this can lead to a much, to the much needed transformation of Hungarian education. But the vast regional and financial difference in the gain indication will not further deepen. Hmm. Experts. Hmm. Although internet pen- penetration is high even in the countryside, in many families, especially with more children, especially with more children, will not have the possibility to provide a laptop for each child to work on. Oh, at least they're having children, unlike in the West. In the West, where you know they 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 have a million dollars, but they don't they have one child. It's like. These people, it's, it's it's really weird, isn't it? You know? Either you have a million dollars, you have one child, or you have very few money, you have very little money, but you have, you know, four children. It's like, come on! Seriously? Why? Like, are, are we supposed to, like, have the rich people adopt the poor people's kids, or what? Like, how do we make this work? But the good news is that shop selling and servicing computers, laptops, and tablets enjoy a real bonanza. Well, of course. <laughs> oh, well, those guys, those guys, some industries are doing very well. As home office and digital schooling require updated IT facilities, IT will surely emerge the winner of this crisis. Yeah, the government is engaged in a two-front struggle, slowing down the epidemic, you know, the 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 coup, and keeping the economy afloat. Yeah, ev- well, every single government in the world is doing that, right? If any of them succeeded, it would be a huge success. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be very difficult. So this is the first article. Uh, th- yeah, this is the first article, and you can see that um. Hungary is, uh, you know, Hungary uh, is, you know, uh, Hungary is, you know, effectively it's transforming, right? It's it's transforming slowly into preparation mode. Well, at the time, anyway, because this is like two two weeks ago or so. So at the time, Hungary was, was starting to gear up, really gear up for the coup. And this gear up is going to cause, you know, other things to happen. And those other things, I'm going to talk. There's a set, there's a two other articles about the things that happened, specifically with the state. And those are gonna be this is gonna be the next video. The next video I'm gonna talk about 
ooh, what is what is bad guy? What has bad guy been doing since this that right? Because bad guy is doing this this massive you know the communication offensive. Now here's the thing, you know always when always when this is a massive communication offensive, what do they call it? It's always because there's something that they want, right? The people doing the the great communication bombardment, they they want to do something, they want to accomplish something, and that's what you want to accomplish. Is what comes on later. Anyway, see y'all a little later.